Hey everyone, welcome back. Today I feel a little bit nervous because I want to talk to you guys about something. If you've read the title, it may sound a little controversial. Um, so hear me out if you may be offended by what I'm going to talk about today. Um, I invite you to just hear me out, right? And know that I am somebody who loves learning from a multitude of different perspectives. I'm not just black and white on things. And I love what Ken Wilber points to, which is that, you know, all of our perspectives are true, but partial. All right. So I really just want to clarify that before I dive into today's topic, because it is a little controversial. And obviously, I don't want to overstep the mark in, in areas that I'm not an expert in. But so many things that have been at the forefront of my own personal learning and growth and the courses that I'm involved in um, and the people that I connect with and even um, a new series that I've been actually engaged in. Um, all of these different things are pointing to the this really meaningful subject that I want to discuss with you guys today and I want to hear from you. I want to hear your perspective. I want to hear your experiences. I want to hear your work of wisdom. Um, I want to hear uh, your questions. I want to hear your struggles, your challenges on this um, and all of it because it's not an easy topic that I want to dive into with you guys today. Um, and, you know, and a lot of us end up avoiding it or even shutting down our perspectives because out of fear of being judged or cr uh, ridiculed or, um, you know, ostracized or whatever. And that's not a good place. Like all of us human beings have a need to feel accepted and a need to feel like we belong. And so oftentimes we shut down um, our conversations, our intelligent conversations on really meaningful topics, um, you know, as a way of, you know, trying to defer um, any sort of conflict or anything. And I just want to point to how that gets in the way of us actually finding a solution when we don't all speak up and share our own valid perspectives. Because again, like I mentioned, Ken Wilbur would talk into, you know, everybody's perspectives are true, but partial. Okay, and that's a really key uh, kind of lens that we want to look at today's topic in particular um, with. And I really can't wait to dive into this one with you guys. So as you're tuning in, drop me a comment. Let me know where in the world you're tuning in from. And as I said, please do co-create this space and hear me out on this subject. And if you get offended, um, you know, I hope that you engage in the conversation and we can talk it out, right? Instead of just, you know, running away from it. Okay, so... Today's title, a little bit controversial, don't really like swearing, so it's just kind of an F feminism. This is just kind of a thought that I had over the a lot of the work that I've been doing and also, like I said, the learnings that I've been having on from a multitude in my personal life and my professional life, um, all sorts of things going on. But this is just what popped into my head and I was like, F feminism? What about humanism? Okay, and I've been... On a bit of an emotional roller coaster with uh, some of the uh, the deep dives that I've been doing, um, documentaries that I've been watching, um, and all these sorts of things. Uh, and also, what actually sparked this conversation for me today was I'm currently involved in a um, course with Marie Forleo um, called B School, and basically, it's you know I'm utilizing her amazing course to help me to serve you guys at my highest possible level um, and get you amazing results, right? And basically she had, um, she said it, she said something today and basically it was um, kind of a side comment, like some, we had a live group meeting today and one of the students kind of raised her hand and, and put to the, um, put to the conversation that she um, was feeling like a lot of self-doubt and what if she gets judged and ridiculed and all the rest of it as she puts herself out into the world and serves in the way that she wants to. And Marie Forleo kind of made a side comment about um, basically that morning she'd read an article written about her um, calling her, um, you know, having claiming that she is toxically positive. All right. And basically I'd did some deep dive research uh, into this because 
I was interested. I was like, what are people saying about this brilliant human being? And, um, and basically, you know, she said in this conversation as she was coaching this woman, you know, she read this and she laughed at it, right? And I wanted to, I'm kind of nosy and curious and I wanted to know what is this article that somebody has written about Marie Folio? Because Marie Folio is somebody that I absolutely admire, you know? And, um, and so I read the article and I listened to this podcast and basically it was um, pointed to the fact that this woman was talking about how toxic positivity um, like perpetuates white supremacy. All right. So it was a pretty big, deep topic. Right. And um, and I listened to that and it connected to um, a documentary that I'm currently watching on Netflix um, hosted by Will Smith. Um, and it's called Amend. And basically it is educating me on something I knew nothing about, which is the um, the 14th Amendment in the Constitution. All right. I'm an Australian, obviously. Um, I don't know too much about American history. It's I know it's a different different uh, different country, different world um, to what we experience here in Australia. But this is the point that I want to get to because so many of the, um, you know, these conversations where, you know, I'm, I'm talking about feminism, right? I'm talking about feminism, but it's also um, anywhere there, where there's a separation or a segregation between different communities of people. And I want to just stress that absolutely there are valid points and perceptions and I by no means am any expert in the area of, um, you know, any sort of racial equality or, um, you know, things like that. I don't, that's not my area of expertise. And I haven't had much of an experience with that um, being in Australia. Um, and basically though, what I want to get us to and where my mind goes as I, my heart breaks watching a documentary like Amend and learning the history that the world needs to know about, right? Um, whether you live and reside in America or not, like this is about human humanity, right? And, you know, I find myself going on a roller coaster of emotion um, partway through, halfway through the series I am right now. And, um, you know, and basically what I'm seeing is, you know, such a really great way of educating humanity about, um, about the injustices, right? About the inequality and particularly people who aren't living in that environment. So I'm finding it really, really valuable. But when I heard Marie mention what she was struggling with today, um, I, and I did my investigations, right? And I went and saw this article. I listened to this podcast that was connected to it. Um, if you guys want to hear it, you can definitely let me know and I'll link you up. Um, and this person who'd written this article and the, done this podcast, she actually was referring to um, an old member of the B-School community um, who um, back in, I think, May last year, where there was a lot of controversy and a lot of, I think that I might, might be getting this totally wrong, um, but it, I'm pretty sure it was when the George Floyd um, challenge was occurring, right? And, um, and that hit everybody around the globe in the heart, right? Nobody could uh, deny the, how wrong all of that was, right? And I think it was in that same time. And what had happened um, was that people in the Facebook community for Marie Folio were kind of outraged and, and expressing their political views and what whatnot. And Marie Folio and her team decided, no, we're not going to talk about any of that stuff in here. This is just for business. And this particular woman, and I'm sure other women in that community, were outraged and f feeling shut down as black women in um you know, um, and connected to the history and what was still occurring in their society and them needing a platform and wanting other people, particularly white people, to support them on that so that we can, you know, revolutionize society, right? And create equality. And so I watched this other woman's like 20 minute Facebook rant on, you know, how Marie Folio had done all this stuff wrong and, and um, you know, and the situation. And you know, I took it all on board and what I was feeling is this thing that we all do, no matter what race you are, no matter what sex you are, no matter what religion you are, human beings are judging machines, 
right? And we want to categorize and separate and belong to certain communities. And basically what it's all driven by is the need for uh, power and also security, right? We're afraid of the unknown and we're afraid of what's different. And that's part of our human condition. And we also want to be the ones who are winning, right? And so that's why we have these um, you know, we're constantly judging, we're constantly categorizing, we're constantly separating, dividing, we're constantly putting ourselves in a group to belong in, you know, all these sorts of things. And even what I'm seeing, and again, I am absolutely no expert on these topics, but just from my mere um, looking at the world, my does deep curiosity to understand hum human beings, right? On a deeply psychological level, like why do they believe the things that they do? Why do they do what they do? You know, what is upsetting them? What is making them fulfilled? What is helping them to reach their potential? What is keeping them stuck? All of those things absolutely fascinate me, right? And that's how I live my life in curiosity of all of humanity. And time and time again, where I see these massive, um, you know, in like drives for, um, for clearing the injustices of the world and the inequality in the world, it's almost like a, um, it's like an unconscious slap in the face because basically what's happening is yes, we need to speak up for, um, you know, the underprivileged and the people who are, you know, not being treated with equal, with equality and all of that stuff that is absolutely necessary. But when we take it to this other extreme, what we don't realize with all of our great intentions is that we are still creating the separation, the divide, the segregation. And it's always in an environment of separation, divide and segregation that we have the power struggles, the inequalities, the injustices, right? The win-lose, the me against you. And the way out isn't just to merely go from, okay, here is a community of people um, and they have been, you know, treated unfairly. And so, yeah, let's build them up. And of course we want to do that. But then the solution doesn't lay in keeping the separate taglines, right? Whether you're a feminist and you think, you know, you're operating from great intentions, you know, for women's rights and equality. But at some point we have to transcend the labels and the separation and the divide. And we have to get to our humanness right? That's what we need to focus on. Because even when we're saying with these great intentions and for the intention of equality, that, you know, this person, this group of people is, um, you know, not dealt with in the right way, and they need to have um, better rights and whatever, what we end up doing is perpetuating the separateness, where, where this party of people, you know, once just maybe ignored or not understood is now just becoming a victim or they're becoming the perpetrator, right? We're staying in this drama, right? And so what it does is we, um, you know, we get afraid of like doing the wrong thing because we're so separated. And I see this happen. And, you know, I've even felt a little bit of this myself um, in terms of, um, you know, speaking up about different things, right? Like, because we can hear, and um, as I've heard in these different um, arenas that I'm no expert in again, um, but when I hear, um, for instance, you know, when in regards to this Marie Folio thing, um, this amazing, powerful woman, this black woman was speaking up with all of her emotion to what she perceived to be wrong and how she wanted other people, in particular white people, right, to, um, to step up and voice. And to be honest with you, like it just, to me, my mind can't get beyond why are we still separating? Why can't we just as human beings be be stepping up for the humanness of everyone, right? Why is it that we have to go, well, we have to step up. You, this group of people, you should be doing better for this group of people. How about we look at the humanness? Because the more we perpetuate the um, separateness, even if we're well-intentioned, we keep separate beings. We're not focused on the similarities at the heart. And, you know, I mentioned before, 
you know, human beings are judging machines, right? But our souls recognize another soul, right? When the deeper we go in our humanness, the more connected we see ourselves, the more sameness we can bring up from the depths, the more we can build and get to the end solution of the equality, right? And even one of the terrible uh, heartbreaking lines that I heard in this documentary, Amend, by, uh, you know, with uh, Will Smith is the host. It's got a, an amazing um, other, you know, famous people going on in it and talking into the history and all that sort of stuff. So I invite you to check it out. But one of the lines um, and one of the pieces of old footage that I saw, um, which was terrible, was this, um, the black journalist, I'm sorry, I don't know the names, but this black journalist was interviewing this um, older white man who had previously um, had slaves, right? And basically, this white man was saying, you know what? Um, I'm so much more liberal than I was five years ago. And I know that I'm going to be even more liberal in five years from now. And this black journalist asked him a great question, which was, you know, Five years ago, when you weren't as liberal liberal as you are now, right? What did you what did you see, or what did you say um, black people were, right? What were they, if not human beings? Which was basically he's at a point in his life during this footage when it was filmed, saying, "Oh, well, I, you know, they're human beings." And the journalist asked, "Well, what were they before? Like, if you if they are only human beings now, five years ago when you weren't so liberal, what were they?" And he basically said he saw them as um, superior pets, which is just disgusting, right? But it's the truth of the perception, right? And once once he was able to cross the bridge between their differences, right, and see their humanity, then he could get to a place of equality. Now, I'm not saying that that's where it was back then, right, at all. And But I'm just trying to paint that picture of it's when we see our humanness that we become equal, right? It's not about, oh, well, we're, we're black and we're white and we, us as white people need to treat black people in this certain way. That's still, can we just get, of course we do, right? But, but can we just get past the black and white and the separateness and the segregation? Same with feminism. Why is it that we have to focus on the men and the women? Why can't we see our humanness, right? Because I know that um, all of these amazing causes have that intention, right? To get to that equality, to get to that sameness, to connect to the humanness, right? To make us all equal and treated fairly. But we can get so caught up in the separation and our focus on that, that we perpetuate the separation. And now instead of being equals, we just look at each other like, oh, the victim and the perpetrator, right? And we still have the, the separateness and we need to bridge the gap by discovering and going deeper into our humanness. And again, I might, you know, have said totally the wrong things in a lot of ways because I'm definitely not an expert. I'm just merely speaking up for what's in my heart because, you know, everything that I want to see in this world, my vision for the world is connectedness, right, is equality, is learning from the diversity that is available to us and enhancing our lives because of that, right? We're not trying to make everybody the same. We do want to be equal, um, but we've all got these differences and I want to get us to a place, you know, if I had it all my way with a magic wand, I'd get us to a place of absolute appreciation of our differences because coming together with all of those differences, we enhance each other's lives, right? right? Um, you know, we don't want to all be the same. We want to leverage the beauty and the difference and the uniqueness. And we can waste so much energy focusing on, you know, who's hard done by or what's wrong and what, what should be done. And all of that stuff is necessary, but we must cross the bridge between the separateness and we must get to the humanness. All right. And I, I feel like, um, Oh, God, I'm going to butcher this right now, but I forget who said it. Um, but somebody said, you know, you won't solve uh, the problem that you that um, uh, the problem that you've got. 
oh, the same thinking that created the problem won't be the solution. I butchered that totally and I can't for the life of me. Drop me a comment if you know. Um, but basically, that's the truth here. You know, the more we focus on the separateness, the more we perpetuate the inequality because any environment where there's separateness is a power struggle right of two or more parties going against one another there's always going to be a winner and a loser and the only way to solve it is to shift our thinking into you know what we really need to focus on in terms of the humanity that connects us all rather than the separate categories that keeps a victim and a perpetrator all right so that's all i'm gonna say on the topic and i definitely want to check in with you guys so please do drop me a comment let me know in the world where in the world you're tuning in from and your um, questions or comments or words of wisdom i absolutely love co-creating this space with you and if you do know anybody in your life who you feel could get value from this message or you think has something important to say on this topic I'd really invite you to share that with them all right let me check in I've got to Teresa and Thin and Ellen and Than and uh, Judy and Lachlan and uh, oh, uh, Bupinda I hope I didn't put you your name. Wonderful message conveyed by you. Have a wonderful day. I'm grateful that this message resonated with you, my friend. Um, thank you so much for showing up. And Brandon, hello to you. And I uh, hope you're doing amazingly well. And Javier is tuning in from San Diego as usual. Great to see you, my friend. And Samuel, great words. I love it. There's lack of balance in humanity. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm grateful that this message resonated with you. And, you know, it's like there's always going to be a necessary for a balance when we're separating and segregating, right? And, you know, the need for balance and equality like goes out the window when we realize our sameness. And whether you sit in any of these categories, black or white or feminist or whatever, right? Um, basically, you know, look at it in our relationships, you know, this is one of the biggest challenges in our, particularly our intimate relationships, right? Where it's me against you, it's men against women, right? And it's, you know, and it's this lack of understanding and this, and it's a constant power battle and all the rest of it. And we need to get deeper than that. And we need to get so deep into the core and the foundation and the rootedness and the groundedness of our shared humanity that, that we can raise back up and see our differences as something to be appreciated, not threatened by, right? When we have that sturdiness in our humanity, we know the depth of our connectedness. We are up here in our differences, appreciating and sharing our those uniqueness. Um, uniquenesses right and so we need to realize that and know that when we're in constant conflict with differences whether that's because you're a man or a woman or black or white or whatever nationality or whatever religion we just need to know that ah oh, this is pointing me to some growth that I need to have because my identity has been connected to these very external not very deep in my humanity kind of ways of looking at the world and separating and segregating myself and instead of doing that I this is my highlight you know to go oh the work I need to go is to go deeper within connect with my own humanity and and see how that is connected to everybody else right how it's shared by everybody else no matter what the external um you know separations or judgments are all right and i know it's not easy what i'm talking about right um you know this is what drives all the wars and everything right but it's i think it's an important subject for us as individual leaders of our own lives to think about right and to get into the heart of and to not shy away out of fear of judgment for voicing your perspective and your opinion because all of our perspectives are really valuable when we don't when we're not black and white about them when we're not trying to project them onto others and we're actually just trying to trying to start a conversation because if i start a conversation here and one or more of you like you know are really offended or you didn't like what i said or you have something completely in conflict to what i'm saying 
Like, I don't want to like block you, right? I want to, I want to learn from you because there's something you know that I may not, right? And this is how we grow and evolve as human beings. We stay with a curious mind. We know that everybody's got something to share with us and particularly those who are in complete conflict with our perspectives in life. They're the ones we want to learn from. If not only to just solidify um, what is even more deeply true and rooted for us, right? You don't have to, you don't have to, um, you know, agree on everything, but you do want to stay open to learn from everything. All right. So even if it's just learning more about yourself, right? Uh, love it. And uh, Samuel, we are all one. Absolutely, my friend. And uh, Javier, you're so awesome. Oh, thank you for those kind words. You are so appreciated. Like I said, um, I hope today's message has served you today. Um, I invite you to go and check out that awesome new documentary. I'm only halfway through Amend on Netflix um, with Will Smith as the host. Um, and if you guys want to uh, like see what I was kind of more talking to in terms of the um, Facebook Live and the podcast and the article written regarding uh, apparently Marie Folio's toxic positivity, which was a huge judgment call basically on a human being that, you know, we're all multifaceted, right? And we all make mistakes and all this sort of stuff. But it's very interesting, um, those sort of topics. Um, and uh, yeah, so if you want me to link you to any of those, you can just drop me a comment and let me know. And uh, Samuel, I only follow two life coaches and you are one. I value your acumen and content. Thank you. Oh, Samuel, you are touching my heart, my friend. I so appreciate those kind words and grateful to be um, somebody that you keep coming back to. That is absolutely such a gift to know. So thank you so much for sharing that and yeah you know I learn from so many different people right because I want to keep growing and expanding and shifting my perspectives and awakening to things that I'm blind to and testing things out right and the only way that we can comfortably learn from multiple perspectives and multiple ideologies and whatever right and just play around with things is when we're connected and solid and grounded in our humanness and when we're threatened by um, you know other people's um, conflicting perceptions and judgments and you know things that they're passionate about um, let that just sink in for you and notice that and and go, you know what, like I got to lean in more in there and I've got to connect more to my humanity because we, the last thing we want is to have our identity external to us. And that's what happens. We put our, our identity in these external things, man, woman, black, white, this religion, that religion, whatever. And we want to take that back and we want to connect our identity to our own unique uh, version of hum, human humanness, right? And we want to, when we're solid in that, we can allow other people to be solid in whatever theirs are without that impacting us on a deeply emotional level, right? So anyway, I could go on all day as you guys know. So that really is my message for each and every one of you guys today. I wanna thank each and every one of you guys for showing up uh, live with me, for contributing to the conversation. You are so appreciated. Like I said, if it is of value, please do share this message. Um, and uh, definitely my last thoughts as usual are to remind you to go out there and honor your authenticity deepen your intimacy and contribute meaningfully and purposefully. And you can do all of that by connecting to meaningful things that are going on in the world that you, that spark your heart, right? That get you interested and passionate and share that perspective, even if it's with just one other person, right? And that by way is honoring your authenticity deepening your intimate connections with other people by sharing the truth of who you are with an open-minded curiosity. And what you'll find is when you share different perspectives, you not only get to connect at a deeper level and hear their perspective that might conflict with yours, but that is one of the greatest forms of contribution that we can make to any other human being that we're engaged with, right? Because there is nothing more growing in our um, awareness and our consciousness when, than when we have an ability to share meaningful perspectives with one another and be open enough to shift and change um, if we get 
you know, if some light gets shown on a blind spot. All right. So anyway, I'm not going to go on all day. I'm going to love you and leave you. And thank you again for showing up today. And I can't wait to see you guys very, very soon. Much love.